Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? So it's the end of the year. So I'm going to be doing a lot of these top 10, top 20s, just kind of comprising lists of where we are. And I'm also updating a website that's actually going to feature all of this content. Uh, but it, it's something that I, I think that, you know, I actually like doing it and it seems like, you know, the, uh, people do like uh, viewing it. So um, we'll, we'll see where that goes. But anyway, this is the top 10 server side web frameworks that I've comprised in 2019. Um, so this is mostly about uh, adoption. How many, you know, how much documentation is there out there for these frameworks? Um, and then what is the activity on them now? So um, and that is one of the reasons why for like uh, people might bitch about Meteor not being on this list. And they would definitely bitch if it was. But like Meteor is a project where it probably could have come in towards the end of this list. But I just couldn't I couldn't add it there. And it seems like it's a dying project. So I just could I couldn't do it. And then one other thing I want to mention is I didn't treat all the different flavors of like MVC.net versus web forms and, and things like that differently, nor did I do that with like Laravel 4, 3, 4, 5 and all the different versions and, and things like that. So I kind of grouped all that together. All right. So number 10 on this list is going to go to Code Igniter, which is an open source PHP web framework. It was originally created by a biker um, and now it's a, it's it's somewhat model view controller not not 100% uh, mvc like normal I, I would say or other mvc type of, of frameworks but number 10 is the php code igniter all right so number 9 is going to go to flask and this is the um, python framework it's actually based on the workzoog like very small python web uh, it might be even a framework itself workzoog actually i know it's a server but anyway uh, flask is based off of that it has some basic templating support um, great for microservices and just um, things that are not, you know, whenever you want like full control and you don't want like a like an all inclusive like a Django or Ruby on Rails type of experience. And then Flask is definitely um, a popular alternative just for a slimmed down API. All right. So number eight is going to go to the most popular Node.js framework, which is Express.js. It's a very slimmed down uh, framework. And uh, again, a great for microservices and very small apps, single page applications and uh, any sort of API, really. All right, number seven is going to go to the PHP web framework Symphony. Um, still quite around and quite a bit in existence. And if you look at its activity, it's still uh, quite strong. So PHP is going to make the list here twice. All right, number six is going to go to PHP, another PHP framework, which is WordPress and uh, quite popular with bloggers. At, at, like, there's still a ton of sites. I mean, there's millions of websites that are running on uh, WordPress even now. It, it was just the most user-friendly type of uh, framework that, that non-coders could use to get started with. To, they had like built-in WYSIWYGs, built-in database connections, things like that. It was very easy for, for beginners to get started with, with WordPress, and that's why it's still around today. All right, so now we're halfway through, and number five is going to go to a Java web framework, which is Spring, and that's the most popular Java web framework out there. Um, very heavy, heavily in use in corporations, tons of jobs in Spring still. All right, so number four is going to go to yet another PHP framework, and that is Laravel. And Laravel is actually the most popular PHP framework out there, and, and definitely the fastest growing as well. So I think as we go into the future, you're going to see Laravel really emerge as the front runner in the PHP community. And then um, probably you'll see WordPress and Code Igniter and those others start to, to decline in Symfony as well. All right, so number three is going to go to Python Django. It's actually my favorite web framework. It's one of the first ones I was actually able to embrace and, and put out production websites under. Uh, with pretty dynamic content, I, I would say as well. So I, I really liked a lot that, that Django did for me. It did. It does so much for you out of the box that you just never quite understand or you didn't know that you needed. Um, whereas like you know smaller frameworks like Flask don't provide that. And um, and a lot of times for people that don't know what they're doing or when they're you know if you've never built an entire web framework before or even you know managed full stacks before then. Um, you know, you're going to end up being in for a surprise. There's going to be things you didn't account for, security concerns, things like that. So I kind of like the all-inclusive nature of these large, large frameworks, uh, even if sometimes they, they feel bloated and they're more difficult to learn getting off the ground. Um, they still provide a lot of benefit for you out of the box and everything. 
All right, so number two is going to go to the web framework that really revolutionized web frameworks into what we know them to be today, and that's going to be uh, Ruby on Rails. I suppose maybe you could give the same shout out to maybe ASP.NET or something, but uh, Ruby on Rails is definitely one of the, the most popular web frameworks out there even still, and it was a completely open source uh, effort, and it really changed the way a lot of things uh, I think were done on the web with uh, revolutionizing and, and really pushing MVC and things like that. So. Uh, Rails is still, there's quite a bit of jobs out there for Rails. There's still a lot of, of attention and um, it, it's not going anywhere. Dude, that was that was terrible, drum roll. Um, I, I'm, I'm in a hurry and that was the first one that, that popped up. So uh, <laughs> anyway, not what I was looking for with the drum roll, but um, number one is going to be ASP.NET. And again, there's not a bunch of different flavors of ASP.NET. Um, really, if you look at ASP.NET, you're going to look at MVC.NET or you're going to look at Web API. And now they're actually one thing. So .NET Core, you know, MVC.NET Core. So um, you, if you're going to just get started with that, then that's what you're going to go with. And there's not going to have to be a bunch of confusion as to which version of what you should be doing um, if you're trying to get in on the ground level there. So as far as ASP.NET, there's really no other web framework that has the amount of jobs out there. Um, Spring would be probably the second closest, I guess, maybe. Uh, but I think .NET Core, um, not just .NET Core, I say .NET Core. .NET Core is the future of C Sharp, Microsoft, and the .NET Runtime, which is cross-platform. So we're going to see what that does for ASP.NET. But already ASP.NET is a front-runner when it comes to actual overall web framework use, and uh, especially with jobs, corporations, things like that. So I don't expect that to actually change any uh, amount going into 2019. In fact, it's probably going to grow just with uh, Microsoft's trajectory lately.